we're told we can get ahead through hard work. But how do you do that when your wages are too low to save, too low to afford college or trade school, too low to do anything but barely pay the bills? Damn, seems like getting out of poverty is hard. But wait, what's this? Three simple rules poor teens should follow to join the middle class? Getting out of poverty must be super easy, barely an inconvenience. So what are these rules? One, finish high school. Two, get a full-time job. Three, don't have kids unless you're married and at least 21. That's all it takes. According to the Brookings Institute, our research shows that of American adults who followed these three simple rules, only about 2% are in poverty and nearly 75% have joined the middle class. Ever since this article came out, this three rules to escape poverty thing has become a huge talking point for people who want to sell you the idea that poverty is easy to overcome, so if you're poor, it must be your own fault. Is capitalism causing poverty? No, it's the poor who are wrong. You don't want to be permanently poor in America. It's very, very easy. You only have to do three things. You only have to do three simple things. You only have to do three things to not end up in permanent poverty. That's it. You do those things, you will not be permanently poor in the United States of America. The reason for poverty is because people do not follow these rules. Mm-hmm. We'll see about that. Finish high school, get a full-time job, wait to get married to have kids. Look at the language. It says that 75% have joined the middle class. The word joined suggests upward mobility, that people in poverty moved up and became middle class. But that's not what the research says. It says that of American adults following these rules, nearly 75% are at least middle class, but it says nothing about where they started. I repeat, it says nothing about where they started. So to say that 75% of people following these rules have joined the middle class is completely inaccurate, misleading bullshit. According to the Brookings Institute, 75% of Americans who have followed these three simple rules and started off in the lowest quintile in America's economy have moved into the middle class. <laughs> Now that that's cleared up, we should also take a closer look at the data in this study. Here's a chart summarizing the research. So I feel like it's easy to read this chart wrong. When you look at it, you're like, okay, for poor people under the column for following all three rules, it says 2%, and under the column for following none of the rules, it says 76%. Does that mean that only 2% of poor people follow all three rules and that 76% of poor people follow none of them? No, that's not what it's saying. To make things clear, you have to look at the bottom row where it says total, so the population as a whole. When you look at that row, you see that only a tiny portion of people, just 1.4% of the population, follow none of the rules. So it's not saying that 76% of poor people follow none of the rules, it's saying that of the 1.4% of the population following none of the rules, 76% of that 1.4% are poor. And likewise, of the 64.8% of the population that follow all three rules, 2% are poor. When you do the math on this, you see that there are actually more poor people who follow all three of the rules than there are poor people who follow none of them. This chart has the same data, but it's been recalculated to reflect what percent of people in each income bracket are following the rules. Among poor people, 9.3% of them follow none of the rules and 11.4% of them follow all three. That's more than 4 million people who these rules are not working for. More than 4 million who did all the right things, but are still poor. Another thing to consider is that this research used data from 2007, just before the great big crash of the Great Recession. If they had used data from during the recession, the percent of people who follow these rules but still live in poverty would have been even higher. And that's just a perfect example of how people can be pushed into poverty by forces outside their control. we do have to admit that following these three rules does give you a better chance of escaping poverty. But will everyone who tries to follow these rules be able to? To what extent are they within your control? Like having a full-time job. There are millions of people who want a full-time job, are looking for a full-time job, but they can't find one. Maybe you live in a city like Flint that's in a constant economic depression and you can't afford to move to where there's jobs. What if you have a disability that prevents you from working or makes employers not want to hire you? What if you're a single parent? Maybe you can't work full time because you need to be at home with your kids. But that brings us to the next rule. Don't have kids unless you're married. Seems pretty easy. Just don't put that thing in that place without that thing on it. Well, okay, but what if you're too poor to afford birth control? What if your birth control fails and you can't afford an abortion? What if somebody rapes you? 
What if you were married before you had kids, but then your spouse dies or they divorce you? Or what if you want a divorce and you, your spouse cheated on you or they abuse you or they abuse the kids or they just plain make you miserable? Or what if, like me, you have an obnoxious personality and nobody wants to marry you in the first place? I think we should live in a world where people are free to have any family arrangement they choose without being punished by poverty. The last rule is finishing high school, and for some people, that's a big challenge. Like if you go to a shitty school where it's just normal to drop out and the classes are so chaotic that it's like impossible to learn. Or if you have to move a lot, like in the middle of a semester and so you don't get your credits. Or if you have to get a job to help pay the bills and don't have time for your studies. Or if your school's like really violent and you're scared to go, or if you're getting bullied. None of these things make it impossible to graduate, but these are some big, serious obstacles. Three simple rules? That all depends. Some will find them simple, others will find them difficult, and some will find them impossible or damn near it. But okay, let's say you manage to follow all three rules and stay out of poverty. But at any moment, something could go wrong. And now, into poverty you fall. Just one of countless examples of this is Vicky Shannon Allen, an Amazon warehouse worker who injured her back. Her healthcare costs went up, and on many days her injury makes it impossible to work. As a result, she's now homeless and living in her car. Is this right here? This is my home. See that? This is my home now. Most of us are just one small disaster away from being homeless, one stroke of bad luck away from being poor. Following a set of rules cannot protect us. Okay, now let's imagine that somehow every single poor person managed to follow all three rules. Would that cure poverty? Nope. How do I know? Because of the Brookings Institute. Yes, the very same Brookings Institute that did the three rules research in the first place. By their own analysis, if all poor families followed these three rules, plus an extra fourth rule of having only two kids per family, America's poverty rate would be 3.7%. That's over 12 million poor people. And actually, it would be even more. The Brookings Institute is underestimating, and they admit it, in their own words. If work-related expenses were subtracted from income, the effects of poverty reduction would be somewhat less dramatic. For more details, see a hand up for the bottom third. Well, guess what? I took them up on that suggestion. In their own research, they admit that if everyone had a full-time job, then a lot of families would you know, they'd have to hire childcare and that costs thousands of dollars per year. Even though you're making extra money from working more, you're also losing some of that money from paying for childcare. They're, they actually didn't factor that in to that 3.7% of people would still be poor conclusion. They just had a little bracketed off sentence saying, oh, by the way, uh, it would probably be higher because of these extra expenses. But, you know, they didn't bother to factor that in. So who knows how much higher the poverty rate would actually be. So far, our discussion of poverty has been sticking to the official federal poverty line. But this measure of poverty is not really accurate because it doesn't account for the local cost of living. Let's say you make 14,000 a year. That's above the poverty line for a single person. But in many cities, rent is so high that even a small basement apartment is like 1250 a month, which is 15,000 a year. You're not even able to afford rent, but hey, officially, you're not poor. Congratulations, you've made it to a homeless shelter. The Economic Policy Institute did research on the cost of living in 615 cities and regions across the United States. And what did they discover? For a two-parent, two-child family, an adequate but modest standard of living costs anywhere from about $48,000 to $94,000, depending on what city you live in. But in the year this research was done, the federal poverty line for families this size was $23,283. That means you can technically not be poor, but to live comfortably and adequately meet your needs would require anything from two to four times more money. Some people in the lower middle class actually have it worse than some people in poverty because they're just at that point where they have too much money to qualify for welfare or Medicaid, but not enough money to afford the things they need. They skip meals to save money so they can afford health insurance or they can't afford health insurance. And so they endanger their health and their life because they can't afford necessary medical treatment. They never see their friends because they can't afford to go out with them to lunch or movies or whatever. And so they become isolated, lonely, forgotten. 
It's a shitty life. If you're unable to afford the basics or can only do so by making big sacrifices, that should be counted as poverty. If we measured poverty in this much more rational way, how many more people who follow the rules would qualify? So, does following these three rules enable you to escape poverty? Let's review. The statistic that 75% of those who follow these rules have joined the middle class is not true. Also, there are more than 4 million Americans who follow the rules but are still poor. Some people are unable to follow the rules. Even if you follow the rules, the stroke of bad luck can push you into poverty. Even if every American followed the rules, there'd still be an estimated 12 million poor people. But 12 million is an underestimate, and on top of all that, millions who are not poor officially are poor in practical terms. So to Ben Shapiro and others like him, please stop using this article to convince people that we can end poverty just by poor people making different choices. It's not that simple. Hello. The reason I do YouTube is because I want to make the world a better place. I know that's not unique, but I just hate how much suffering there is, and I want a world where everyone's life can be good. I started my YouTube channel last year, but before that, I actually spent many years writing scripts for videos. I have rough drafts for literally like a hundred videos on capitalism, alternatives to capitalism, revolution, building revolution, and organizing. The videos I've been making and will continue to make for a while are not these videos. Before I make these videos, I want my channel to grow in subscribers and views, because I want these videos to reach beyond the leftist bubble. So to do this, I need your help. If you can, please tell people about my YouTube channel, share my videos online, and if you haven't already, subscribe and click the bell to get all notifications. Liking and commenting help too. Thank you so much for your help, and from deep within my heart, I wish you all the best for today and every day. Sharing is caring, and sharing is communism.